everyone. My name is Leo Rivera. Uh, I was a 2020 summer intern at the Museum of Ventura County, and I'm here today to talk to you guys about my project that I did on Lucy Hicks Anderson. My project was to go through digital records of the Oxnard Press Courier and specifically looking for references to a woman by the name of Lucy Hicks or Lucy Hicks Anderson uh, in her later years. Um, and so the first question that people have is who is Lucy Hicks Anderson? And well, the short story is that she was a black trans woman who lived in Oxnard between the 1920s and the 1940s. She was a prominent socialite and chef and just all around a member of the community. Um, she won many awards at the County Fair for baking. Um, but of course, the thing that we're here to talk about is the importance of her legacy. Like I said earlier, she was a black trans woman. She lived openly as a woman for as far as we can tell her entire adult life. And the interesting thing about newspapers back then was that they were a lot like Facebook is today. You see a lot of, oh, so-and-so uh, came down from Santa Barbara to visit their friend, or this person had a birthday party. So the, the first introduction you get to her is very much through sort of her social life. Uh, the broad strokes of who she was are that she was uh, she was a beloved chef and a socialite um, and briefly, most likely, a, um, a madam, uh, the runner of a, of a brothel in Oxnard. And so you sort of get a sense of her role in the community until you go into the 1930s, which is when, when stuff starts getting interesting in the U.S., kind of across the board, you know, you have the Great Depression, you have Prohibition. Uh, and Prohibition, Lucy did not care about that all that much. She was arrested several times in the 1930s for um, possession of alcohol and uh, well, running a den of iniquity, um, to put it euphemistically. And that's when her personality really starts to come through. So looking through records in the 20s, you can see her, the, the social butterfly that she is. And in the 1930s is when you get her personality, oddly enough, through these arrests. Um, and she was a very vibrant woman. Took a lot of pride in her appearance, uh, as she should. She was very beautiful. She was a very beautiful woman uh, who, who wore expensive clothes, uh, as we found in one case that uh, her, her home was robbed. It was, I think, about $4,000 in today's money worth of clothing that was stolen. Uh, but like I was saying, going back to her personality, uh, she was very funny, even in light of situations that were very unpleasant, that were dangerous to her, even in the jail setting. Um, she managed to stay lighthearted. My, one of my very favorite articles that I found of her um, was saying that she had been, she had lost her phone privileges at the jail uh, a few days in because she had been using them to call the judge who had sentenced her, have long conversations with him about how much she hated being in jail. And when she lost her phone privileges, she took to writing daily letters. Um, and so that's one of my favorite stories about her. And uh, that was day six by which she had lost her phone privileges. So it's it's that kind of thing that speaks to her resilience, to her the brightness of her personality. Uh, and her independence, that's the thing I forgot to mention, was that throughout this, throughout almost the entirety of this period that I'm looking at, at information about her, she is unmarried. She is an unmarried Black woman uh, living by herself, as far as we can tell, she, uh, somewhat owning her own property. She was engaged at one point, uh, but he passed away in a car accident, sadly. Um, so it's just, it's just all these layers of things that are impressive about Lucy, uh, you know, the were taught that Black people didn't really have um, much rights. Just we don't really think about Black women in the 20s and 30s being independent and owning their own property. Um, but as far as we can tell, she did. And she ran her own business, um, controversial as a type of business it might have been. And she still managed to be popular and she still managed to be well-loved. Community. 1945, towards the end of the year, unfortunately, she was she was outed as a trans woman, and of course, they didn't they didn't use such respectful terms for her. Um, but like I said before, she she ran a, a, a brothel, a bordello, or whatever you want to call it, uh, 
but ultimately a house of prostitution. And uh, there was a routine check where a doctor was brought in to check for venereal disease among the women there, and Lucy was included in the test. And unfortunately, um, they they had to strip her down to do the test, and that's when everything sort of exploded for her. Um, she had gotten married shortly before this, uh, and so actually she was then brought to court in a very, very prominent trial uh, for defrauding the U.S. government. Um, a false marriage license, um, dodging the draft, as this was right after the end of World War II, and just a whole host of other things. Uh, and yeah, and unfortunately, given the time period, given the shock of the situation, her name was dragged through the mud, but it also showed, once again, her position within the community uh, that never once did the newspaper stop referring to her as Lucy. Um, and most of the time, they also used the correct pronouns for her uh, because she was Lucy. She was a member of their community. She was a lot of their friends and they didn't know any other way to address her. That was part of the shock of the situation uh, was just that they all knew her, that they all loved her and that they couldn't think about her any other way as who she was. Which is rare in, in histories like this, but it's very important and very touching when you do see it, uh, that even though she wasn't treated necessarily with the respect by the law and the greater community that she deserved. There were still very many people who loved her, who cared for her as she was. Um, but the ripples, the ripples uh, extended past Oxnard of the shock. There was actually a full page article taken out in Time Magazine about Lucy's story because it was so, so unbelievable and to many people. It was so shocking. And that and it had just that sort of effect on the community. Um, but even within her trial, which she was put on, like I said, for fraud, for dread, uh, for draft dodging, she still remained composed. She remained funny. Uh, she still dressed herself to the nines. And that was the thing that most stood out to her. Uh, and that was the thing that most stood out to me about her, was that in the 30s, in the 40s, when she's being called something she's not, she still manages to hold her head high. She still manages to be true to herself and be honest and loudly and proudly declare that she is Mrs. Anderson. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. That was what my research uncovered. You can find more at the Museum of Ventura County's Research Library if you ever want to look up Lucy Hicks Anderson. Thank you for watching.